Okay, this is part two of the video in which we derive the sampling theorem. So in order for any of this to make sense, you need to make sure you have watched part one first. Okay, when we finished part one, we had this uh, serious, uh, serious uh, load of messy mathematics. We had shown that to sample a signal and get something that we're calling x of s, um, if I, sam if I take the signal and multiply it by p of t, which we've defined to be a train of impulses, that samples the signal. Then we found the Fourier transform of p of t, and we discovered that it too is a train of impulses. So p of t, uh, or in p of t, the impulses are separated by t sub s seconds. In p of omega, the impulses are separated by 2 pi over t sub s. So um, the impulses are separated by uh, the radial version of the sampling frequency. And now the thing we need to do is uh, figure out what uh, uh, the Fourier transform of x of t times p of t is. So to do that, we'll bring up um, a fresh window. And I'm sorry, I should have prepared this window ahead of time, but... And uh, we have x of t times p of t. Now, we will assume that we know what the Fourier transform of x is. Uh, we need to know this in order to be able to figure out how the... or we need to know this in order to be able to apply the sampling theorem. When I transform a multiplication in the time domain, I get a uh, convolution in the frequency domain. And so it turns out that in the, if I multiply in the time domain, I get 1 over 2 pi x of omega convolved with p of omega. Okay. Now, we just went through a lot of pain and effort to uh, figure out p of omega. Actually, that wasn't that painful. It was kind of fun. So p of omega is 2 pi over t sub s, the summation k okay, going from minus infinity to infinity of delta omega minus k 2 pi over t sub s. And to save writing time from now on, I will call this omega sub s. And this should be convolved. Okay. So, um, and, oh boy, we're not doing particularly well today. You'll notice that I also forgot my 1 over 2 pi out here. Okay, now I think we've got everything that we need. Um, convolution is a linear operator, which means that, uh, for example, I can, uh, since I'm, uh, I have a constant out here and a constant out here, those two guys will cancel, and I'm left with 1 over t sub s. Because it's linear, I can take x convolved We'll actually highlight this in a different color because this is important. I'll take, I can take x convolved with this summation, and that's the same as a summation of x of omega convolved with each individual term in the summation. So when I do that, I get an opportunity to uh, erase that because I got that wrong. I get the summation k is equal to minus infinity to infinity. I take x of omega convolved with delta of omega minus k omega s. Okay, so hopefully this is making sense. So far, so good. Now, I need to figure out what happens when I take x and convolve it with a delta function that's been shifted in frequency. So, let's... Uh, clear off some space on the screen. If I take x of omega and I convolve it with delta 
of omega minus k omega s. If I actually write out the convolution integral, this will be the integral from minus infinity to infinity x of alpha, where alpha is a dummy variable of integration, times delta of omega minus k omega s minus alpha d alpha. Okay, so this is um, exactly like a convolution integral that's in the time domain, except now we're integrating over a frequency variable. And again, this is a this alpha is the dummy variable of integration. So this delta function, this guy here, is 0 except when omega is equal to k omega s. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. Got that wrong. Let's try that one more time. This is 0 except when alpha is equal to omega minus k omega s. Okay, and when alpha is equal to omega minus k omega s, then I have uh, this whole thing being equal to x of omega minus k omega s. Okay, so the idea here is that convolving a function x of omega with a delta function that shifted in frequency just shifts the original function by the amount that the delta function was shifted. This is a pretty handy result. Okay, so the fact that I now know that convolving this x of omega with a shifted delta function just shifts the function, I have that down here again. In fact, that's exactly what I worked out up here. So I can say then that this whole term is equal to, and I'll erase this other stuff to make more room, this whole term is 1 over t sub s, the summation from k going from minus infinity to infinity of x omega minus k omega s. Okay, so there you have it. This, again, to refresh your memory, this is the Fourier transform of our sampled signal. So what does this actually look like? What sort of uh, monster have we created by doing this? Well. Let's plot this, or at least graph it sort of conceptually. Let's see, we'll do this in orange. We haven't used orange for a while. Okay, so I have a uh, place to plot it. When k is equal to 0, I just have x of omega. And what I'm going to plot here is a sort of a conceptual representation of the magnitude spectrum of the sampled signal. So again, when k is equal to 0, I just have x of omega. So whatever x um, of omega looks like, so this guy here is x of omega. Or this is actually the magnitude of x of omega. OK. When k is equal to 1, I have the same x of omega, but it's been shifted to the right by omega sub s. So out here, where I have omega sub s, I take my copy of x of omega, and I add another copy out here. Okay, so this is the magnitude x of omega minus omega s. And that shows up over here. When k is negative 1, I have negative omega s, and I get the spectrum of x shifted out here. This is the magnitude of 
x of omega plus omega s. Okay, and this happens from minus infinity out to infinity. So by sampling my signal, I've taken copies of the spectrum and pasted them into this plot going from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, so it turns out that to uh, get to the uh, last bit of information that's going to take more time than I have left in the video, this is a reasonable, pla reasonable place to stop. So let's stop here and we'll have a part three of this video.